Thank you. So today, uh, as part of our uh, Science of Living course, we have a very special guest who has traveled 15 hours to come here and share his view of nature, his view of India, his view of spirituality in India. So our university, as you know, is the inspiration of Sirbindos and Mother's teaching. So today you will have a real life understanding of what it means to somebody who is a Westerner uh, coming and sharing with you today. So it's a very special occasion for you. He is going to be here for three days. You will have this session about two hours. We'll have a break. Then tomorrow and day after tomorrow, he will have a, another two sh sessions with you. Uh, one of the things uh, I'd like to do today is uh, at least have you understand a little bit about uh, background of Narad. Narad is called Richard, uh, it's called Narad. Yeah. That his mother has given her, uh, given him the name Narad. Actually, his name is Richard Edinburgh. He was born and raised in New York, New Jersey area. He studied uh, music and English in college. He also pursued singing. As he, he was on a scholarship for singing at uh, Metropolitan Music Opera. Uh, he was introduced to Sirbinda and Mother uh, 50 years ago. Since 1960, he's attached to this India and his spirituality through Sirbinda Asana. His uh, biggest passion is nature and most importantly flowers and spiritual significance of flowers. And many faculty has, you know, uh, everywhere you see that there are flowers and each flower has spiritual significance that is given by mother. So while he is here, he will walk with you to, to make you understand what is the spiritual significance of flowers. Then his uh, passion is horticulture. And we have a nursery here. He will take you there and help you understand that. Now you wonder, you are a student of management. You wonder uh, that uh, what I'm going to do with understanding flowers and nature. But I'd like you to understand for holistic learning as an individual, we have to expand our horizon from classroom to outside of classroom. The biggest, most effective, and the most masterful manager on this earth is nature. Yes. And nature, we can learn a lot of things to be an effective leader and manager. So I want you to use his time here to understand how do you relate with nature and learn things from nature. There are many discoveries that you see in the, in the lab are triggered, prompted, inspired by watching nature. What is the discovery of plane? By watching birds. So just I'm giving you a little idea about why it is so important to understand nature. Because we are part of nature. We are one of the species of nature. We are not the master of nature. We are just one of the species of nature. So from that point of view, I want you to understand that how music, poetry, nature can help us overcome some of the weaknesses that you highlighted about two weeks ago. So one of the things he will also highlight is our vital weaknesses and how do you overcome it? What triggers it? 
and what we need to do to help ourselves to overcome them. So I just want you to focus on the science of living course is supposed to be practical. You can feel it. You can experience yourself and then start believing in it and start practicing it. His uh, passion is poetry also. So he will spend time with you. How poetry could be used to expand our faculty that we have, that sometimes we don't even know we have. Our imaginations also could be drawn into and expressed into the poetry. So don't look at poetry as a dry subject, but what are the <coughs> things you can learn from poetry? So with that, I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank Naran, who normally does not go out. It's the first time coming and uh, in front of the student here. So you are very fortunate, I am very fortunate that he accepted my invitation. So. With that, I would like uh, Narad, thank you so much for coming, sharing your experiences with our students, and I know that you will enlighten them. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not a speaker. I'm not a lecturer. And despite that very warm welcome from HP. I'm not much older than you. <laughs> I'm actually 37. Yes, I'm prematurely gray, that's true. And uh, yeah, I reversed the numbers of my age. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, we're all young. And we're all ready for progress. <coughs> now, let me ask, let me tell you first of all that, uh, well, who knows what a hot dog is? Anybody ever hear of a hot dog? Who has not heard of a hot dog? Okay, a hot dog is also called a frankfurter. It's also called a wiener. It's also called a frank. Very, very popular in the West. Now, most of you are probably vegetarians, so you haven't eaten a hot dog. But uh, hot dog is served on a bun, and there are all kinds of condiments, relish, mustard, uh, perhaps uh, jalapeno peppers, onions, so many condiments. So this yogi goes up to a hot dog vendor. Hot dog vendors have little, little metal carts on the streets all over the world. And they have steaming hot water and they make the hot dog and, and they put all, whatever you want on top of it. Huh? So the yogi goes to the hot dog vendor and he says, make me one with everything. Make me one with everything. I can see that he didn't get it. Did anyone get it? What does a yogi want? Connect me to everything. Yeah, he wants to be one with everything. So he says to the hot dog vendor, make me one with everything. And he gives him a $20 bill. He finishes the hot dog. He says to the hot dog vendor, where's my change? And the hot dog vendor says, change comes from within. <laughs> That's what we're here to talk about. Change coming from within. And in this series of three days, we're going to talk about the inner change the 
movements of our lives that can create change by looking within. There's a gentleman in the ashram, one of the trustees of the ashram, always in his 80s now. And uh, he once said to the mother, Mother, uh, I want to learn tailoring. I don't know anything about yoga. I don't care anything about yoga. I just want to do something for you. I want to learn tailoring. And mother grabbed his ears like this and pulled his ears down and she said, everything you need to know is within you. Everything you need to know is within you. Your teachers can't teach you anything. All they can do is help bring out what is already latent within you, within your soul. So how did I come to this land that is the spiritual center of the universe, India? Well, I was young, and my parents were very religious, and religion in America, basically, at that time, was mostly Christian, at least in, in a greater part of America, and everything was centered around the church the holidays, the occasions of Christmas and Easter and, and all of the various functions of uh, growing up in religious families. <coughs> well, I revolted. It was stifling me. It was... Uh, not enough. I was looking for something else, something deep.